Praise the Lord and thank God for another Wednesday night Bible study. Thank God for his word. Thank God for you. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. Father, we come this day to say thank you. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you just continue to take care of us, Lord. We thank you for how you meet every need. And even now, Lord God, as we have opportunity to study your word, to hear your word, Lord, as your word goes forth in power and in might, we're thanking you in advance for the healing, for the deliverance, for the peace, for the joy that's going to come from your word this day. Lord, touch every heart, touch every mind, touch every soul, Lord. Touch in such a way that the people will continue to know that it's not from a mere man, woman, boy, or girl, but straight from you. Lord, even now, allow our spirits to be sensitive to yours. We thank you for this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Praise God. Again, thank God for your presence. You know, we've been teaching and we've been talking about love. And, you know, when you see uh, love, you can see it from a, a lot of different perspectives. To Tonight, I want to uh, just let you know what, what love is and what love isn't. Praise God. I think that's the right way to say it. And then tonight's lesson is from um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we call it the, the love chapter. Um, when Paul was uh, speaking to the people in Corinth, he was talking about uh, various gifts. He was talking about special gifts. And he, as he closed out in uh, chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, verse number, I want to begin reading in verse number 29. And this is Paul just speaking. He says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. And the more excellent way was when we go right into uh, chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13, beginning at verse number 1, as Paul is talking about this more excellent gift. And what is that gift? It's the gift of love. Praise God. You know, we pray for so many, many different things from God. Have you ever prayed that God will increase your love walk? Have you ever prayed that God would give you a, a stronger desire to love the people of God, to love people that's not people of God? Have you ever prayed for love? So when you look at these other gifts that Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and you go on as he began here, verse number 13, uh, actually as he closed out uh, chapter 12 uh, with verse 31, he was talking about a more excellent gift. And we should desire the more excellent gift. And so what he's saying is we should desire the gift of love. I'm going to begin reading it. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning at verse number 1. The word of God reads, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains, but not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believeth all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether they are prophecies, they will fail. Whether they are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For you, we know in part, we prophesied in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. 
I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now about it, faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And so when we look at what Paul is saying here, he's talking about love being the greatest gift a Christian man, woman, boy, or girl could possess. And once you have that type of gift, now you're in a position to, to give it to someone else. You can share that particular gift. You know, we talk about the gift of prophecy, being a teacher, gift of miracles, healings, gift of tongues, gift of interpreting, but you have the gift of love. And when one has the gift of love, they're able to encourage, they're able to lift up, they're able to build up, they're able to uh, speak peace into other people's lives. And so we're talking about here, the greatest gift, and that is love. You know, when I look at this, and I want to look at a little note I wrote here, it says, let me go on record to say that even though such attributes as faith, teaching, and giving a considered gift, all Christians are exhorted to develop these particular traits. And the reason I read that is because even when you think about um, miracles, you think about teaching, you think about healing, you think about all of those are still traits that you still want to develop. And especially your love walk, you definitely should be uh, one. If you uh, consider or call yourself a Christian man, woman, boy, or girl, you should be operating in love. You know, some of the different things that's going on around us, I'm going to tell you the only way you're going to survive, the only way those things are not going to overwhelm you, the only way those things are not going to keep you way down, keep you with a headache, keep you with a backache, is that you have love. Because folk do some things right now that I tell you what, is old people, you say, get on my last nerve or get on your last nerve. But what we've got to understand is it requires the love of Christ in order to survive in this world. Praise God. I'll go on and begin. Uh, Paul starts out with letting us know that uh, spiritual gifts are absolutely positively useless without love. And so when I looked at here, verse number one, it says, though I speak tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbals. And Paul is saying, you can have this special gift. Um, and Paul, a little bit of exaggeration there, because to speak uh, of angels and that kind of thing. But he says, I've just become uh, sounding brass or clanging cymbals. And see, those folk could relate to that at that particular time because Paul was letting them know and Paul was reminding them that before they came to know uh, Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, in their pagan worship, they were using um, these particular instruments. And so for Paul to tell them that if you don't have love, even though you have this particular gift, it's just like your pagan worship. It's just like you don't even know God. It's just like you're coming into uh, the worship service, praise God, and you're not coming in to worship God. You're coming in to worship a pagan God. And that's what he's saying. He's saying that that special gift of of speaking the way that you speak, how you're able to articulate yourself is useless. It's worthless if it does not have love with it. Praise God. And so when you think about it, the best of education, praise God. Uh, you went to the best seminary. You graduated with, with your PhD, and yet you don't have love. Paul said that that particular gift is useless. And so it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what, what circle of life, what, what level of income, uh, praise God, what community you may live in, what type of automobile you may drive. You can have all those things. But what Paul is saying is without love, you are nothing. And we go on to look at verse number two. He says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And so the gift of prophecy, you know, your faith is off the chart, you know, praise God. You, you, you walking in and, and you're a believer. You're telling people what you believe. You, 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 you're living this thing out and you don't have love. When, when we look at this, he says that, 
praise God, I'm nothing. I may think that I'm something because I possess a, a, a level of faith that is probably twice what the next person may have. Or And, and I mean, it's just development. I'm, I mean, I'm on fire. And Paul says, but have not love. He says, you are nothing. And so what I'm trying to get you to understand today is we think a lot of times because we're in a certain position or we yeah in a certain position hold a, a, a particular title in that position that it makes us something or somebody. However, what Paul is saying here, as we look at the greatest gift, which is love, he is saying you may be in that particular uh, uh, position. Uh, you may have a, a, a title. However, if you're not loving, he says, you're nothing. And I know when you talk like this to a lot of people, it probably even offends you because you're thinking that, well, I, I, I'm all right because I, I, I know God has called me and I know I'm doing, and I don't dispute whether or not you've been called. I don't dispute whether or not you're in your right calling. I don't dispute those things. But what I'm saying to you is that you've been elevated by God to those particular positions. And if you're not operating in love, just as Paul said from the beginning, he says, and I, I have not love. He says, and the gift of prophecy, he said, the moon mountains, he said, I am nothing. You understand what I'm saying? He says, um, when you look at this particular chapter, Paul is wants us to really understand that no matter what degrees we may hold, no matter what position and or title that we may possess, if we're operating in those things without love, we are nothing. Praise God. I go on to verse number three. It says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Now, when you look at this is what he's saying is I'm making all these sacrifices. Yes, I'm I'm feeding the poor. Praise God. I'm I'm on point. I'm, I'm giving, you know, I'm a giving person and you're giving because um, you you know, that's the right thing to do. Um, you're not actually giving out of love, but you're giving because you believe that that is, in fact, the right thing to do. And what Paul is saying here is, even though you do those things, and if you don't have love, he said, it profits me nothing. In other words, there's no benefit from it. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, the scripture says, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And so there's always uh, uh, the reaping and sowing. You know, you look at how the scripture says that God allowed the sun to shine on the just as well as the unjust. So there's principles that uh, of, of reaping and sowing that uh, regardless of whether or not you're a saved man or a sinner man, that if you operate in those particular principles, you can be, in fact, successful. And what Paul is saying here, even though I do all these things, it really profits me nothing. I do these things in vain. I do these things because, yes, the, the, the word says I should do them. Maybe my pastor say I should do them. Somebody say that I should be doing these things, so I'm going to do these things out of maybe necessity, but I'm not actually doing it out of love. And the whole clear picture of this particular chapter in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through, I believe, 13, it, yes, 13, it's speaking about our love walk. It's speaking about your love walk. It's speaking about uh, uh, love being uh, the greatest gift that one could ever possess, the greatest gift that one could ever share, and that's love. Praise God. So as I go on and I look at verse number four, and please li listen real closely. It says, love suffers long. To, we don't, we, no, not me. No, that's what you're saying, man. Suffer for what? Okay. And it's kind. Love does not envy. You know, envy, jealousy. You know, you want something that belongs to someone else. You have a desire for what belongs to someone else. That's not love. Love does not par parade itself, you know. I'm this and I'm that. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, 
is not provoked, thinks no evil. You know, real love, and I think about even the scripture, First Peter, First Peter says that love will cover a multitude of sins. And so love won't keep thinking about the wrong. Love will begin to think about people in a totally different perspective. It said, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. And so when you start talking about rejoicing in the truth, you're, you're uh, sincere about the truth. Uh, you know, sometimes the, the, the evil, the, the wicked, and you have folk that celebrate that. You have folks that's happy about, you know, what's going on. You know, you think about our government and, you know, the, the, the vision that's, that's there and when one falls, I mean, they, they, they rejoice in those kind of things. I mean, instead of encouraging, instead of building up, instead of trying to get somebody to, you know, get back into a right position. No, it's all about, you know, putting somebody down. It's all about, you know, beating somebody up. And so when we look at from verses four through verses seven, and then look at verse number seven, it said, this is love we talk about. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now, when we look at love, uh, in other words, if it bears, in other words, love never gives up. Love never loses faith. And no matter what the particular consequences are, love will always be there. Love will be there to, to keep you encouraged. Love will be there to to, to help you. Love will be there to support you. Love will be there, and I'll say this again, to encourage you. You know, even in our homes, um, you really can show love to your family. I'm talking about your spouse. I'm talking about your children. I'm talking about being able to express love. And how do you express love? You express love by, by your patience. You express love by your 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 voice, you know the the sound of your the words that you use, even your your facial and 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 and, and body uh, uh, will be show real love because a lot of times we can say one thing, but facial and body expressions tell another thing. I, I know in my very own life, I know I'm I'm one that you know usually. I express it through, uh, you know, so you can normally tell or usually tell, I should say, by facial or even uh, my body expressions. And so um, real love will make you bring even those things into control. Real love will make you think before you go to express yourself. <laughs> and uh, real love will make you think hard. Real love will make you, like I say, make you show love, make you give love, make you encourage people instead of always beating people up, instead of always putting them down, always trying to find uh, something wrong with uh, who they are and, 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 and what they do. It says, love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So in other words, love won't quit on you. Praise God. Uh, a lot of times people talk about love, but love, the love that they're talking about, they quit. They give up on somebody. How can you tell somebody that you love them this month, next month you talk about you want a divorce? That's not love. Love helps you work through different things. Verse number eight of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. And so when we look at, it says love never fails. Now, all gifts, especially tongues, will at some point in time no longer be needed. It says prophecies will fail. In other words, something will actually stop the prophecies from uh, from 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 moving, they will cease. The knowledge will stop. In other words, it won't be a need for those things, but it will always be a need for love. We will always need to be in a position to love others. And what I like about this is when I go down and I look at that verse number 11, you talk about love now, right? It says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, 
No. It says, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, when we look at this as a child in Christ, our level of love is as a little child, right? And and as we grow, as we mature, our love should develop to a more mature stage. In other words, even in your home, on your job, in the grocery store, wherever you may be, especially inside the church, you should be maturing in your love walk. Some of those people and or things or situations that used to get you down shouldn't get you down any longer because you're now operating in the love of Christ. That special uh, greatest gift that could ever be given or one could ever possess, I should say, is love. And so now you're showing love. In other words, the scriptures say, when I was a child, I, I spoke like a child. My words were as a child, I understood as a child. My level of understanding was a level of uh, immaturity. My It was a level of uh, a, a child's level. He says, but, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So in other words, my love now has developed uh, to a mature level. I'm no longer... Uh, operating as a little child. I'm no longer thinking as a little child. I, I put away those childish things. So in other words, I'm not going to participate in a bunch of nonsense because that's childish. I'm, I'm, I'm grown up. I'm grown up. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grown man. Praise God. You're a grown woman now. And so you no longer should be behaving as a child. You should no longer be participating in childish things. Praise God. And so um, our love, that means as our love is being developed, praise God, you're not loving like a little child. You're loving from a level of maturity. Praise God. Verse number 12, it says, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known. And when I looked at that, I believe that the mirror is the word of God that, that's, that's being spoken about here. So in other words, I can see uh, God through his word. OK, praise God. And, and you say dimly. In other words, you won't really, really be able to see God until you have opportunity to see him face to face. Yes, the word uh, kind of shows us who he is, the word. Uh, begins to let us know that we need to make changes in order to be able to see God face to face. However, when you look at God's word, God's word is, it is indeed a reflection of who he is, but to see God face to face will be, oh, what an awesome time. And then that's when you will, in fact, really, really know who God is, really begin to have um, a right relationship with him. So think about, again, uh, dimly. So it's, it's, it's not as clear. Um, I, I know for my own self, as much as I may read the word of God, as, as much as I may pray to God, there's still things that I don't know. There's things that I don't understand. And so that's got to be just the dim part that's being spoken about here. He says, for now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. And so again, I don't get everything. I don't get the clear big picture. I, I, I get a portion of it. It's not, it's not distorted. I just get a portion of it because um, I'm not face to face with God. However, once you and I have an opportunity to become, to be face to face to God, then we'll see God for who he is. We'll see him in all his splendor. We'll see him in all his might. We'll see him in all his glory. And then you'll be able to look back and you can say, now I see why he took care of me. Now I see why he answered my prayers. Now I see why I was supposed to, to give him all the honor, to give him all the glory, to give him all the praises because he is deserving of those things. And so no longer dimly, praise God, but now face to face. And now we can see him for who he is. Praise God. We look at this last verse here in the uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse number 13. He says, Now abide faith, 
hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Now we look at faith first. It says, faith is what enables us to come to God. Hebrews 11, 6 reads, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so you can see the importance of faith. When you think about Abraham, Abraham's faith, praise God, it was his faith that, that allowed him to grow and mature. It was his faith that, that, that helped Abraham to leave here, to go there and believe God for this and believe God for that. It was his faith. And so when we look at these three, faith. Now let's look at the second one. The second one is hope. Praise God. Romans 5, 5, it says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And when you look at hope, we're not talking about wishful thinking. We're talking about God's promise. And so we're talking about what we have on the inside. We have a, a level of hope. We have a level of expectation to, to recognize, to realize that that what God promised, God is going to uh, uh, fulfill. Praise God. In other words, if he said it, it's going to take place. And so our level of hope is not wishful thinking. Our level of hope is a level of expectation. In other words, I, I say I'm I'm saved, glory to God. And, and so if I believe that I'm saved, then my hope, my level of expectation is to spend all eternity with almighty God. And so you can see why first faith, then hope. Praise God. Those things are, are very, very important. And like I say, hope does not disappoint. If I have hope in Christ because of who he is, because of what his word tells me about him, that I know that there's a level of expectation. There's something that I can expect from this hope that's going on on the inside. Now it spoke about now these uh, abide faith, hope, and love. They spoke about uh, three. But now here it says, but always say when you see the word but that means to pay attention he says but the greatest of these is love what so faith i had to have faith in order to uh come to god i have to have hope to stay with god and now you're telling me that out of these three that love is in fact the greatest and when i think about that is if the scripture says that God is love and he who knows God knows love, he who does not know love does not know God. And so that means then love enables me to imitate him. So if I'm supposed to be like him, that means I need to be able to imitate him, which means it's going to require a level of love so that I can treat people the way that he treats me. Praise God. First John 2 and 6 says, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk as he walked. And so if I call myself a Christian man, or you call yourself a Christian woman, or boy, or girl, praise God, then that means that we should walk as he walked. And uh, 1 John 4, 7 and 8, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And I shared these couple of verses last week, and I may share them for the next couple of weeks. And the reason why I'm sharing these verses is we have to understand that when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we says, now abide it, faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love, which means that love is what uh, should be operating in the life of every Christian man, woman, boy, girl. We should be showing love. We should be demonstrating love. We should be speaking love. We should be acting love. We should be walking in love. Praise God. So often we see, okay, well, love, that means that I'm, I'm going to pay attention to you. No, love is totally different. Love is is, is, is walking this thing out. Go back when you have opportunity. Read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. As you read each verse, ask the, the Spirit of God to minister to you, to, to actually speak into your spirit so, so that you can become love, so you can walk love, you can speak love, you can do love, you can be love. And that's what's important about this. And I have to read uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 13 one more time. It says, Now abide faith, hope, 
love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Notice beyond any doubt, the greatest gift that you have, and I'm not talking about uh, Jesus. We know Jesus is the greatest gift ever given to mankind. The greatest gift that you could possess is love. And when I talk about that, I'm talking about going back and you look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and you look at the various gifts that's being spoken about. However, when you go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and look at verse number 31, he says, but earnestly desire the best gift. And yet I show you a more excellent way. And that more excellent way is in fact the gift of love, which every, every Christian, man, woman, boy, girl should possess. You may not be one to interpret tongues. You may not be one to speak in tongues. You may not be one who's a teacher. You may not possess this particular gift. You may not possess that particular gift. However, you as a Christian man, woman, boy, girl should possess the gift of love. And so Paul say that that is in fact the greatest gift. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the gift of love. We thank you that you are love. And we thank you, Lord, that faith enables us to come to you. Hope keeps us looking towards you. And love helps us to imitate you and walk like you walked. And so right now, for every person under the sound of my voice, Lord, speak in such a way that they will know that this was from you. Not a man, not a woman, not a boy or girl, but straight from you. Touch, Lord, heal, Lord, deliver and set free as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And to that person today who's talking about, well, I want to love. And the only way you can truly love is you've got to have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You say, well, how do I do that? You do that by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you say, well, how do we do that? You invite him into your heart. You say, well, how do I do that? You do that by repeating this prayer of faith with me. You say, Father. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Father, I am indeed a sinner. Father, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me and through me for the glory of God. Jesus, thank you for coming into my heart. I accept you this day as my personal Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for receiving me into your family. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Welcome to the family of God. And just know one thing, the scripture says that you have to confess with your mouth and believe it in your heart. And if you've done that today, then welcome, welcome, welcome to the family of God. We thank God for you today. Get a Bible, begin reading in St. John chapter 1 and allow the Spirit of God to begin ministering to you. But the main thing that you have to do, you got to find that Bible teaching, believing church and get in and become a part of the body. To God be the glory. May God keep you and bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.